Um, let's get started. That's the getting started noise. Uh, College Credit Plus is Ohio's dual credit program. Uh, students earn high school credit and college credit at the same time. Students enroll in college courses and adhere to the requirements of the college. So, you know, for North Central State, if you were taking English or speech, you'd have to make sure that you meet North Central State's requirements. We're going to be hearing from a couple of different colleges tonight. Um, so they all have separate requirements. Students can take classes at more than one college at a time. They just have to be sure that they adhere to the admission requirements for all of those schools. It's just the one slide, I'm kidding. Um, the program is open to students in grades seven through 12, um, have to complete an assessment exam and be determined eligible. Now there are separate things. There is CCP eligibility for the state and there is eligibility for the individual college or colleges you are going to. That'll be talked about a little bit later. As we said, uh, any public college or participating private college, and again, you may apply to multiple institutions. So if a school has a science class you really like and another school has a, a speech class you really enjoy, as long as you meet the requirements for both colleges, that's something you can absolutely do. Uh, must be Ohio residents, that's one rule. I know that I'm wearing blue and yellow and I apologize to any Buckeye fans, I am not a Michigan fan, but you know, nothing bad about Michigan, you just can't live there. Have to be an Ohio resident for the program. Students can earn credit to satisfy both high school and college requirements. So if you were to come take an English composition class at one of the schools here tonight, that would satisfy, say, your English 11, English 12, whichever requirement you happen to be going on there. You will work with your counselors to make sure that whatever courses you are taking are going to count for high school graduation if that's why you're trying to use them. Must successfully complete the course in order to earn the credit. Obviously, you cannot get an F in a class and have that count towards your graduation requirements. It's the same thing with your high school grades. Students can take classes during the summer, fall, and spring semesters. So that's how the academic year rolls for College Credit Plus, uh, summer, fall, and spring. So um, if you are a freshman, once you get to May and you finish your freshman year, you are then starting your sophomore year that summer. Uh, students have options of taking courses at the high school. If it, there is a, uh, a college course being offered through your high school and you meet the requirements, you can take that. Or you can go to a campus or take a class online for, at any of the other colleges as long as you meet those requirements. Participating. Students must be eligible for College Credit Plus participation based on assessment exam scores. Um, those assessments count as ACT, SAT, AccuPlace, or the Alex, the place you in MapleSoft. Each college has their own different requirements. For North Central State, we take the ACT and we take the AccuPlacer. So if you happen to meet our admissions requirements and also the state CCP eligibility, you would be fine. But again, each college has their own requirements that you must meet, so pay attention to the school that you're looking at and make sure that you meet all of their requirements. Uh, scores must indicate that you are college level uh, in at least one subject area. So AccuPlacer is the example that I like giving. Um, you would come take a reading part, a writing part, and a math part. As long as you hit one of the state score levels, you are then deemed college ready and able to participate in the College Credit Plus program as long as you also meet the requirements of the college to which you are trying to get into. Um, we will then, as a college, look at your score and make sure if you are eligible, uh, determine if you are not eligible, what further testing needs to be done, or what other criteria need to be met. If you test close to a given score for the college credit plus for the state, um, and you have a 3.0 cumulative GPA or higher, or can get a recommendation letter from your school, uh, you are also allowed to conditionally participate in the program. This is all information that I know is just hitting you, but talk to your counselors and they will go over the process with you to make sure that your son or daughter um, is able to get in and participate in the program. After you apply, or after you take the AccuPlacer or ACT or other placement test, you are then going to apply for admission to the school. So again, each school has their own admission deadlines, application deadlines, testing deadlines, all of that fun stuff. Work with your counselor and work with your reps that you're gonna meet here tonight to make sure that all of the deadlines are being hit and that you're gonna be able to participate if that's something that you want to do. As always, colleges have the final decision. So if you don't meet the scores, please understand this is not a personal thing. We are required by the state to have you meet these scores. 
And subsequently, if you don't, that's when you talk to us and we try to find other options. We want this program available to you. And we want you to get as many college classes while you're in high school as possible. Work with us and we will help you the best way we can. Step three, if a student is considered eligible and has been admitted, then the college will discuss course options. So if you are looking to take a math class uh, and your high school does not offer that math class through any of the colleges, then you will talk with us as ad advisors and we will make sure that we get you into the right class. Again, the, the most important thing is not only working with the college, but also working with your high school counselor to make sure you are hitting all of your graduation requirements, you're hitting athletic eligibility requirements, all of that good stuff. As we talked about earlier, courses can satisfy high school graduation requirements. Your high school counselors, they're the ones who are going to help you understand those requirements. The most important person in your life right now is going to be your high school counselor because they are going to get you to the high school graduation. How many people here don't want to graduate high school or don't want their kids to graduate? No hands. Good. Work with your counselors. The most important advice I can give you, work with your counselors. Uh, schools have additional requirements as well and to the state minimum. This holds true for all schools, so be sure that you work with your counselor, uh, that you're working on those graduation requirements. My job as an advisor is to help you know which courses you can take based on your assessment scores, the prerequisites, and the level one or level two status. Um, be, until you finish 15 hours of college credit plus courses, you are what's considered a level one student. Each college has their own list of level one courses that they have published on their website. We have ours on our College Credit Plus page. Those are the courses you are limited to take um, as a CCP student. Um, those courses have to be either transferable courses, courses in IT, uh, part of a technical certificate, part of a pathway, or study skills, academic, or career success. So each college has their list of courses. If that's something that you want to take, you work with your advisor and we get that set up. Um, once a student completes your first 15, or um, you can move to a level two course. So that's any other class outside of that level one list. So if there is a program that you want to get into, those courses don't appear on level one. We work with level one courses until you get those first 15, then we get you into the level two courses. There are exceptions to classes that CCP students can take, and those are private courses with one-on-one -on -one instructions, courses with high fees. I believe there was an aeronautics class that had like a $10,000 course fee. We love you college Credit Plus students, we absolutely do. We can't have you taking $10,000 courses. Study abroad courses, you can't travel on a high school dime. Physical ed courses, pass fail graded courses, or remedial or religious courses. That is the exclusion list per the state. This is non negotiable. Uh, for grades, college plus grades are earned in the college course is the same that will be on your high school transcript. These courses will appear on your high school transcript and affect your high school GPA. Do I have any students who are valedictorian or honors chasing that they're willing to admit? Okay, College Credit Plus is a great way to not only get college credit, but also to have these courses go back to your high school GPA um, and help boost that. However, conversely, we want you to understand that if you come to college, decide it's not for you, and then just stop attending or you fail a class, that is going to show up on your high school transcript forever. If your school uses a weighted grading scale for AP, IB, or honors courses in a subject area, the College Credit Plus course is going to count as a five point. So uh, if your school uses a weighted scale for English and you come take a college composition course at the college, that will be weighted as a 5.8. So again, for anybody who is valedictorian, salutatorian, honors chasing, this is a fantastic way if you get enough of these and enough A's to boost that GPA way beyond a 4.0 for scholarship opportunities and honor status. Students may take College Credit Plus courses in subject areas that will satisfy graduation requirements. This is the third time we've seen this, so clearly the state wants you to understand if you have a graduation requirement, you can take a class to meet that. Who do you work with to make sure that you're meeting your graduation requirements? Your counselor. Yes! Thank you, thank you, thank you. The counselor is the most important people here. Uh, if the course that you are taking through the college at your high school happens to have an end of course exam, English, math, science, you will have to take those as well. Uh, how many classes can a student take? Students may be enrolled in up to 30 semester credit hours per year. That includes the high school courses. So the formula 
30 minus the number of high school credits times three equals the maximum credit uh, college credit plus hours. So again, you have to work with your counselor to make sure you can't just come take 30 hours of college credit and also be taking high school credit because you're going to go above that 30. So you're going to work with your counselor to make sure that you are staying within that 30 hour window. Maximum number of credits over the life of the program is 120. Um, we have to do a little switch here real quick. Um, so yes, so if you are starting early, uh, please understand that there will be a cap of 120 total throughout the life of the college credit plus. And again, if you go beyond that 30, you as a family will be charged for that. I know that we have some private school students here today, so I want to talk about the one difference uh, in terms of funding between public college credit plus students and non-public college credit plus students, that is the SAFE account. If you are a a private school student or family who wants to participate in the College Credit Plus program, the one additional step that you have to do is called the SAFE account. If you go to ohiohighred.org slash ccp, there are instructions on there about how to fill out your SAFE account. This is the funding application that you must do every year to the state. You are going to fill out your information, you are going to send that information to the state, the state is then going to turn around and say, you have been awarded this many hours for the academic year. It is very, very rarely 30. Sometimes it's as low as six or sometimes potentially even less than that. But please understand that you are you're able to self-pay for classes, but you are only going to be funded for whatever that safe account tells you. So that is the, the big primary difference between public school funding and private school funding or homeschool funding if we have anybody here tonight. Safe account is required for homeschool students and for private school students. Once you have the SAFE account, send that information to the college so the college understands that there is funding available. Um, it's all part of the application process. They have a really, really helpful link on the ODE website uh, to walk you through that entire process. Ah, we just wanna make sure that you pay particular attention to this slide. That's what we uh, wanna do here. Uh, all right, uh, time for a dance break. <laughs> I know this is on the Pioneer video, I'm not worried. All the Pioneer students know I'm a little weird. Um, so yes, we are going to go back to the uh, public slideshow here. And hey, look at that. Dance break over. Uh, so now, uh, picking up where we left off, this is the formula. So again, make sure you work with your counselors. Same thing for my private school students, from homeschool students. Make sure that you adhere to that letter of what the state is giving you so that we stay within the limited number of hours that you were given to make sure that you're not having to self-pay because that defeats the whole purpose of College Credit Plus. Uh, if you enroll in more than those 30 hours, um, it, your counselor will talk with you whether you want to drop the course or want to pay for the entire course. The f way that the state works Yay, Ohio. Let's say that you were signed up for 28 credit hours between your high school and your college, and you signed up for one more three credit hour class. That puts you at 31. I'm only one credit hour over. That's absolutely fine. It's not how the state works. What the way the state says is any course that you take that puts you beyond that 30 hours, you as a family are responsible for the entire cost of the course. The whole thing. So if you are at 29 and you sign up for something and you go over, you're paying for that whole class. So please make sure to work with your counselors or stay within your safe account so that you're uh, at the proper number of hours for College Credit Plus. Uh, again, assuming the cost of the courses, fees, textbooks at the college's standard rate. So if you are going to a school and the school has a rate that uh, you wouldn't normally be paying, please understand if you go beyond that 30, you're going to be paying for that. Differences between high school and college. Um, for high school, tests are sometimes given weekly or at the end of the chapter. How many students here are in high school right now and feel that they are tested way too much? Good news, when you get to college, you don't have to worry about that because you're only going to have like one or two. However, those tests are probably going to be worth a large percentage of your grade. So you're trading lots of tests worth little amounts of points for a few tests that are worth a whole lot. It's one of the huge differences between college and high school. Study time. How many of you uh, are willing to admit that you roll into study hall and finish your homework for the next period's class? Anybody? Okay, thank you for being brave. 
That does not work in college. You cannot show up 15 minutes before your class starts and finish writing a four page paper. That's not how that goes. You are going to have to spend time outside of class doing homework. The rate that we give is two to three hours of homework for every hour and spent in class. So on average, you can probably expect, um, you know, anywhere between three to five, four to six, safe. You may find courses are a little bit easier. If, it's, if you love math and you're taking a math class, it may not have to be that much, but at worst, go ahead and plan that amount of time because it's gonna be a lot of work. Knowledge acquisition. Information provided mostly in class, out of class research is minimal. So you will come to class, you will, in high school you will get lectured to, then you will go home and do the homework. In college things are kind of flipped like that. What you will do is have to be prepared for each individual class. You will have to have the reading done, you will have to have notes taken about the book and that's what you'll discuss in class. Um, so again, it's a lot of being prepared for class as opposed to going to your high school class, being taught, and then going home and applying that knowledge. Uh, it, high school grades, lots of quizzes, tests, and homework assignments. How many of you think you take entirely too many quizzes? Anybody? Okay. So the good news is you have a lot of assignments that make up a whole portion of your grading for high school, for college. You're not going to have necessarily as many assignments, but those assignments are going to be worth more points and a larger percentage of your grade. So again, um, make sure that you are putting ample time in. Again, average two to three hours per class outside of uh, the time that you're in coursework per hour to make sure that you're getting everything done. Parents, we love our parents. How many of you are actively engaged in like parent-teacher conferences and coming to talk to teachers and all of that good stuff? Yes, parents? Okay, that's good. We want you to be actively engaged. However, you cannot come and just talk to your college instructor. You can set up a meeting maybe, but you move from more of an active role to more of a passive support role. I know for some parents this is a hard role to take, but it's necessary. This is college. You have to allow your students the ability to struggle, the ability to learn on their own. Um, we are always working with parents, but understand it is your child who has to be doing the work in class. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but one of the benefits of participating is students can earn high school and college credits at the same time. Also, this shows up on your high school GPA. Uh, brand new information, I know. Um, if, how many of you absolutely know what you're going to do after you graduate from high school? Okay, so for those of you who already know, this is a great way to start getting some of these classes done. For those of you who don't necessarily know, this is a great way to come in and get some high school graduation requirements done, some general education coursework done, or again, and I'm sure the parents in here will agree with me, this is going to be your last chance for absolutely free college, so maybe you just want to take a drawing class, or Spanish, or beginning Chinese, whatever it happens to be, this is your chance to do that. Uh, benefits of participating continued, experience in college early to understand the expectations of college life. You will learn really quick the first time you show up having not read and the professor calls on you, boy I probably should be prepared. Make sure that you do the reading, it's the most important advice that I can give you. Uh, tuition and textbook costs. How many uh, folks in here went to college and can tell me how much textbooks cost more than they should? Yes, a big show of hands. Textbooks are expensive. You get them for, th for, for free here. This is fantastic. Um, consequences. If you fail or withdraw too late from a college course, the district may, may seek reimbursement from you as a family. So again, the state is not paying for you to fail courses. So if you fail a class or decide to drop it halfway through, please understand that the district may come to you for reimbursement since they are being charged. Again, the grades that the students earn are on the student's college transcript permanently. If you leave here and you go to the University of Hawaii, go Warriors, um, and decide not to tell them about your time at Ohio, they're going to find out about it. So this is never going to go away. You come here, get an F, that F is going to follow you forever and ever and ever. Uh, some of the problems that that cause, you can potentially start off at a college that you've never been to before on uh, financial aid probation because you have attempted a certain number of college hours and not completed them. So please understand, we don't say this is scary, but we say this because it's real. This is going to affect the rest of your life if you do poorly. If you do well, it's going to help you, but if you do poorly, it is going to hurt you. It's as simple as that. 
Um, one of the new things the state's rolling out this year is CCP probation and CCP dismissal. Um, if you have a 2.0 GPA or less in CCP courses for a term, or you withdraw from two or more courses in an academic term, you are going to be put on CCP probation. That is going to limit you to one college credit plus course for the college term, semester or quarter, and you may not enroll in the college course in the subject in which the student previously in the DRF. So if you come fail English and you really, really need that English uh, for high school graduation, CCP probation will not let you take that English course. So please understand, again, there are ramifications for CCP probation. If CCP probation continues, um, you will be dismissed. After a college term on dismissal, you may submit a request to the high school to allow readmission back into the College Credit Plus program. That's between you and your school. So the best way to avoid having to appeal and not get uh, readmitted, don't go on CCP probation and dismissal to begin with, right? Okay. Uh, expenses. For public colleges, universities, no cost to the student families for tuition, fees, or books. For private colleges, there may be a small cost per credit hour. Um, optional expenses, parking, transportation. I know at North Central State we don't charge for parking. I know that there are some schools that do. Uh, that is not the sale that pitch that I'm trying to give you right now, but understand that some colleges have fees, transportation. If you have to take a bus or something like that, it's not going to be covered by College Credit Plus. Support services. Counselors are still going to work with you. We love our counselors. They love you. We want to make sure that you get through all this together. My job as an advisor is to make sure that you are following along, doing everything that you need to be doing, and meeting all the goals that you want to achieve. Colleges provide the same academic supports to college students as they do any other students. So if there is a service that's available uh, to a traditional student at a college, that's going to be open to you as well. Tutoring is one of the examples. We have a fantastic tutoring center that you would be able to use if you take classes out there. How many student athletes in the room or families of? Okay. Um, confirm your school is an Ohio High School Athletic Association member. Learn the OHSAA requirements. Know that the summer courses do not apply. If you are trying to get all of your classes in the summer so that you don't have to take anything in fall and still be eligible for sports, that's not how this works. So make sure that you work with your coach, your counselor, your principal, or your athletic director to maintain your athletic eligibility. We do not see any, want to see anybody have to forfeit games or matches because they aren't eligible. So please be sure to work with everyone at your school to ensure athletic eligibility is met. As far as transferability goes, certain gen ed courses and technical courses will transfer, especially from one college, uh, one public college in Ohio to another Ohio public college. Uh, it is up to the college to which you are transferring to make sure that everything is going to transfer in. So if you are ultimately looking at a four year for your, your bachelor's degree and you start taking classes at a two year, make sure that all of those classes are going to transfer, work with each representative of the school uh, to ensure that. If you go to transfercredit.ohio.gov, they have a lot of good transfer information on there. Um, again, all of the, the slide information, this slide is on the state website with all of the links available as well. College ready. Um, I don't necessarily, there's college eligible, which says you met a score that you can take classes. There's also college ready. If you do not feel that your child is going to be okay, or you as a student do not feel that you are ready for college, there's absolutely no shame in this. You have to be ready to put all of this work in. Again, the state wants you to understand what you do in college is going to matter while you are still in high school. So please, please be sure that you are not only just eligible, but that you are ready to take these college classes. There's a lot to be said about going off to college and sitting in a college class by yourself with a bunch of 20 and 30 somethings. There's a whole lot to consider, the amount of work. If you are doing a lot of extracurriculars, sports, if you have a job, if you're taking a bunch of classes at your high school, maybe it's not such a great idea just to come and try to get free college. We want to be sure that you are ready and eligible. Deadlines, April 1st, students must complete and return to the school office the intent to participate form. So your counselor will have the intent to participate. That is step number one, that's the first domino to fall. Make sure you work with your counselor to get the letter of intent submitted. If you are a private school student or homeschool student, the letter of intent is available either through your counselor or on the OAD, OHD website. That has to be done. Uh, same thing for safe accounts for private school students and homeschool students. April 1st is the deadline for making sure that that's done. 
ACT and SAT dates, every school has their testing deadlines, so we want to be sure that you are within that. If you take an ACT the day before a testing deadline for a college, please understand we're not going to have that score back in time. So make sure you plan accordingly and plan ahead. We're talking about classes for next year, so you should have ample time to get everything done before now and then. For colleges and universities, each college has a deadline for admission. So if you are wanting to come to a school, talk to the advisors from the school, go to their website, find out their deadlines, make sure you are meeting them. Uh, find out about assessment testing requirements. If you are trying to go to a school that requires you to take the ACT and you take the Accuplacer, that is not going to be beneficial. So make sure you work with all the colleges to understand what you have to do to get in. Summer semester deadlines is going to be as early because classes start in May. There are some of you, if you decide to take summer classes, who are going to be getting those courses while you are still finishing up your high school year. So summer not always the best time to start, but if that's something you're looking into, then you really, really need to start working with these colleges to to make sure that you can get in. Uh, for other questions, again, ohiohighered.org slash ccp is the, the source for many, many fine results of, to questions that you may have. Lots of forms, lots of information on there. Uh, so that is the state overview. Going to switch to North Central States real quick just to go over some specific things for North Central State. I promise it's not going to be 52 slides like the state. We don't make this. They make it. We just have to go along with it. And look how colorful the slide is. Look how much better, right? Can I get an ooh? ooh. Can I get an ah? <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Here's some helpful information real quick about North Central State. Student ratio and uh, Mansfield Mavericks between OSU Mansfield and North Central State. We have some sports available. Um, lots of scholarship opportunities. It's a pretty campus. There are some of our buildings. Oops, there are some of our buildings right there. Um, this is just kind of a quick overview. All of this information is the handout available on the North Central table. Um, College Now programs. For anybody who is interested, this is a program that starts off when you go uh, into your junior year. You can go into the business, engineering, or bioscience, or the SciMed Academy, and walk out of college and high school at the same time with your associate's degree. So information, again, is at either collegenow.org. For some of you, that podium's in the way, but understand that this website is listed on the packet, um, or through the North Central State website. As far as deadlines for us, April 1st uh, for applications for summer, May 31st for fall. Um, that's going to be the second most important thing. Letter of intent by, does anyone remember the date? April 1st. Then follow the college's application deadlines and testing deadlines and everything else. That's when you get to work with me or your counselor to make sure that you're meeting everything. Um, only other thing I really want to talk about is the Tuition Freedom Scholarship. Has anyone ever heard about the Tuition Freedom Scholarship? Couple hands, all right. So basically the way this is gonna work is you are going to come to North Central State and you are gonna start taking College Credit Plus classes or if you are at a career school and you were taking articulated credit, you are going to earn at least, for students who are graduating in 2019 or 2020, uh, nine credit hours. If you have that nine credit hours and a cumulative 2.75 GPA through all of your coursework, you are going to be eligible for tuition freedom. Tuition Freedom Scholarship is a last dollar scholarship, meaning once you graduate high school, you are going to apply to North Central State. You apply, you do your financial free application for federal student aid, your FAFSA, and the government's gonna say one of three things. More than likely, and let's hope they say, hey, we're gonna give you full Pell coverage. You don't have to pay for anything. We're all gonna be very excited. Or they're gonna say, you make kind of a lot of money, so we're gonna give you partial Pell, or you make way too much money, we're not gonna give you any Pell that's when tuition freedom is going to kick in. Now, tuition freedom doesn't cover uh, textbooks or lab fees, but what it does cover uh, is tuition fees. So up to 64 hours, minus whatever you've taken through North Central State, is going to be given to you in free tuition so that we can hopefully get you an associate's degree as close to free as possible. So information is available on our website. The application for next year is live, but it go, you can look at the web page and it has all of the steps and all of the things that you're going to have to do it is subject to change, so if anybody is going to be a freshman or a sophomore, please understand that this could change by the time we get there. But for right now, start working on the college classes, keep up the GPA, and we're going to be okay for tuition freedom, right? Right. Um, oh, the whole next slide. Um, deadlines, again, 
always important for the college and all that information is listed on our website. Uh, contact information, I'm the one on the bottom there, Scott George, that's me. Uh, my boss, the lady over there working slideshow, that's Carrie. Um, again, all the contact information is on there. I deal specifically with students who are coming to the college to take classes either online with us or face to face. If you are planning on only taking classes through high school, that's when you work with a counselor. So I'm going to turn it over to, okay, you, you coming up next? Yeah. All right, Ohio State, everybody. Thank you all and uh, enjoy the rest of your night. To me. So I'm gonna, my name's Kayla. I'm from the Ohio State University of Mansfield. Um, so I work with all students that are gonna take the AccuPlacer. I'm one of the AccuPlacer proctors. I'm one of the admissions counselors that will help you through the whole process, essentially. I joke with a lot of people that my main job is to help relieve stress. So essentially, I will help you through, like a lot of students, typically the most popular emails I'll get during the whole College Credit Plus thing is, did you get my transcript? Did you get my application? Those kind of things. Thank you. So as far as like making sure your application is complete, I know we talked about some test scores and such. Ohio State, um, we are pretty steadfast on making sure that you apply on time. But if you do have a test score that comes in after the deadline, like maybe you took it right before the deadline, we will accept it after the deadline. So we're not as I guess strict on that part. So as far as getting your transcript in and your high school information form, those have to be in on time. So the high school information form and the transcript are both two documents that your guidance counselor will send. Um, they are not deemed official if you send them or if you deliver them by mail to Ohio State, Mansfield, or Columbus. Um, I just emailed a whole bunch of guidance counselors on Friday, a couple changes. There's actually a lot of directions and things like that on this sheet. As far as getting those sent to Ohio State, um, Ohio State University City had so many College Credit Plus students last year, the Mansfield campus had more than even the Columbus campus. So we had a lot of College Credit Plus students last year, if that kind of zones it in on for you. Um, I know Scott mentioned level one and level two courses. Um, in previous years, you could take any course at Ohio State as long as you met the prerequisites. So now you have to meet the level one or level two courses. Ohio State actually is going to try, um, we just submitted an application to add some more courses to our level ones. We didn't have a lot of history courses in level ones so we wanted to kind of add a few more classes that you could pick from essentially um, so I know that application was due November 1st to the state so perhaps by next spring um, you won't see some new ones yet but by next fall semester when some of you are coming to the Mansfield campus there will be a little bit more classes added to that list um, and, and that is also on our website this is the main part of our website so um, the Columbus page of College Credit Plus and the Mansfield page do look pretty similar so if you guys are going through and trying to figure out what test scores do I need? Ohio State does um, look at test scores, so we do accept ACT, SAT, or the AccuPlacer, but the only instance where we will accept an AccuPlacer is if you take it at Ohio State. We do not actually accept AccuPlacer scores that are taken at other institutions or even at your high school, so that's a new thing this year. Um, so it is free the first time you take it, but if you want to try to take it again, you can take retake it once a semester. So those are all the big updates with Ohio State. Um, I know Scott mentioned some deadlines. Um, some were state deadlines and some were for um, North Central, Ohio State does have some different deadlines. So for those of you that are private school students, um, you actually have to have your application in, your transcript, your high school information form, and your safe account funding application into Ohio State by March 1st. So it's a month earlier than some of the other colleges you might talk to. I know it's earlier than North Central's deadline. So um, I have helped a lot of students in the, over the past year working with Mr. Kurt Lusher there at St. Pete's um, with the safe account. So if they're, I know like some students will get into some technological issues and I can help them a little bit, but more often that I'll refer you to ODE, the Ohio Department of Education safe account office. Um, so there's a little bit that we'll all help you with as far as the application and such. I'm more than willing to look up and see if your application is complete or um, if you're going to sign up to take the AccuPlacer with Ohio State, you actually have to have your transcript, your high school information form, and your application submitted in order to take it. So that's just about everything for Ohio State. I know the test scores um, for ACT, SAT, and AccuPlacer are all on the back of our sheet here. Um, we look at subscores, so we don't look at your composite score. So if you take multiple tests, we'll look at multiple scores as long as you have them sent to Ohio State or if they're on your transcript, that counts too. So that's about it for Ohio State. Is there any questions that you guys have? I know we'll all be here afterwards too, so if you think of some, what have you got? 
Sure. I didn't bring my reading glasses, so I can't see what it says. But that sure. scholarship thing, you could apply for that scholarship. Would that, could you take some classes in the summer if you did, if you were scholarship, if you did receive a scholarship? Or is that just for the fall? So the scholarship sheet with the test scores on the table, so that's actually after you've graduated high school. So that's okay. for seniors and on. Okay. Yes. Like graduated senior. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I know you talked about the, you asked a question about the credits that students get. I have had a couple um, St. Pete students that did only get like three credit hours that they could take for classes. So t typically that can only be one class that the student would take. So I have a couple um, this year that they were going to take classes in the fall that now they're waiting until spring because we looked at course schedules together and they were like, well, I'd rather take that class, but it's not offered till the spring. So we work with you guys on that too. If you only have a certain amount of credit hours, and we'll work with your guidance counselors to make sure you don't go over that. So what have you got? Is there any uh, classes like a boot camp or something? I know there was a few years ago before you go in and take the AccuPlacer that you can kind of get a little warm up before mm -hmm. the student goes in. So we don't have a class that you can do, but we have a lot of practice quizzes and things like that through our website. I know the Ohio Department of Education has some as well. I know North Central State College has practice tests on their website too. So I know a lot of us, a lot of these colleges have some of those kind of things. I know they did last year. I see Scott shaking his head. So is that still true? Yeah, I was shaking my head. Okay, okay. I was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't mean to speak for you. But so there are a lot. I know like through... Um, the ODE website, Ohio Department of Education. I know like I saw a lot of practice quizzes and some videos and things like that. And some of the quizzes were a lot smaller. So if you wanted to just kind of brush up on a few areas as far as different maths. Any other questions you guys have? Rob Stanley is my name and I'm the uh, Director of Dual Enrollment at Mount Vernon Nazarene University and uh, we have been participating in Dual Enrollment since uh, actually 1989 uh, when the state kind of started talking about uh, high school students attending universities. Uh, we had, had started dabbling at that point uh, but really especially in the last four years um, we've really taken off. Uh, one of the reasons why that's happened up until four years ago we primarily just offered uh, classes on campus only so you had to come to us uh, but Four years ago, we kind of made some moves, and uh, now we offer online courses as well that were made uh, with CCP students in mind. So I'm going to be talking about two of the four formats that we offer tonight, and uh, and then uh, for sure I want to talk to you if you have questions that I can help you with afterwards. All right, I'm going to move closer. Maybe that will help. All right, perfect. So we are... Uh, one of the things that's kind of unique about us, uh, we are, there's two private schools here today. Uh, we are a private university, and one of the things you need to know about us being a private university, you saw in one of the slides that a private university has the option to charge additional uh, charges for tuition costs. We have chosen to be like a public school in that uh, there are no additional charges. Um, we just receive what, what comes from the state is what we, we take um, with that. So for you as a student, uh, there are no additional charges, uh, and that goes for or the no additional charges for the books uh, on top of that as well. For us, here are the things that kind of stand out. We are a faith, uh, faith uh, university, um, and so we integrate faith into all of our classes. Um, and so you can be taking a number of, of, of courses, subjects, and, uh, and if you're looking for faith integration into the classroom, that for sure is something that uh, is important to us. Um, small class sizes, um, as well as uh, we offer over 100 majors academic programs. And so with that said, if you want to come to us, these are some of the things that, uh, and, and take classes on our campus, that is definitely something uh, you can do. And these are some of the things you would be able to take advantage of and see. Um, fully accredited. We provide for students who take uh, classes on campus, all of our uh, uh, student amenities are a part of that. So that means access into all of our uh, weight, weight room, athletic center, uh, even into admission into basketball games, things like that uh, is all a part of that. Uh, we offer free career counseling as well. Um, assessments uh, that we have put together that uh, we have found that students, especially as they're uh, starting earlier, taking college classes, a lot of times they get to high school uh, graduation and they have a number of hours and they still don't know what they want to do and so we kind of partner with those students and provide career counseling uh, to those students. 
Um, and then uh, we do offer kind of a unique program uh, your senior year. If you're interested, we do offer a residential. Uh, we have about six to eight students a year that uh, choose to take their senior year of high school and they come and they live on campus uh, just as a first time freshman. And so that is uh, an option that we provide as well. Um, let me just move on to the next year. Sorry, all right. So uh, here are our admission uh, requirements. Uh, if you're interested in either, both our on-campus and our online, which I'll get to, uh, you have to have a 2.5 GPA. And then here are the ACT scores, which I have a brochure that will uh, spell those out for you as well. Uh, we are pretty particular about that. We wanna make sure that students are successful uh, in taking our courses. Um, our application deadline is April 1st. Um, so it's the same date as the letter of intent to the state. Uh, so if you're a public school it's April 1st if you are a school uh, student coming from a private school or home school then that date is March 15th just so that way we can get an acceptance turned around because uh, you have to have an acceptance form to uh, turn into the state so that helps us to do that um, and then uh, once so many student applies then we need your high school transcripts and then copy of your ACT scores and we typically uh, can get back to you fairly quickly on, on a decision Online courses, I mentioned that earlier. We offer close to 17 to 20 designed specifically for a fall, a traditional fall or spring semester, so covering 14 weeks. Fully online, you don't have to come on campus. That is something you can take advantage of. Um, I have a list of those courses. Uh, you'll see here in a few moments, but um, that is something you can do. Plus, uh, we just uh, rolled out this year uh, six to eight weeks. So if you want a more accelerated approach and uh, you feel like you uh, are a student, you could do that. That is something that uh, you can take advantage of as well. Uh, plus we offer uh, a number of these courses through the summer. Here are the online courses that we offer. Uh, most of these are general education level one. And so if you're interested in those, um, those are definitely classes you can take advantage of. We do offer a fa family pay. So students who may not, uh, like private school students, homeschool students, um, sometimes don't get all the funding uh, as, they, as the public school. Uh, we offer a very reasonable family pay rate. Um, so if you're interested in that, uh, you can talk to me as well. Um, with that said, I would just encourage you to come visit us. Um, we're not too far away. If you have any questions, uh, you can come down for a visit. Here's my contact. I know we have a couple more. I don't want to take too much time, um, but I'd love to talk to you and, and share with you about our program. Um, my name is Cheryl Logan. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Ashland University. I'm here to talk to you about CCP just like everybody else is doing tonight. Ashland this year for the first time is offering free College Credit Plus classes. So as a private institution, we're pretty excited for that. That way we can make it easy for you guys to take your CCP through us. I'll go over some of our requirements, but at the end, Carla and I will be sitting at our table to answer any questions you might have. So. I'm going to have the same exact issue as everybody else. There we go. For our admissions requirements, you guys are looking at taking your college prep courses in high school. Can you turn up the mic a little bit? Oh, yeah. Can you hear me now? No. No? I'm sorry. I don't have really big pockets, so I might have turned stuff off. There we go. Ha! Huh. Okay. No problem. I was like, I told you to wait to ask questions and you're standing in the back with your hand up. I was like, that doesn't work for me. Okay. So we're good to go now. So for Ashland's College Credit Plus, you need to have done some of your college preparatory classes in high school, as well as two units of English, Math, Science, and Social Studies. So when you're coming in, we also like to see a 2.5 GPA on a 4.0 scale, at least. Obviously, the higher the better. We love seeing that. And for your ACT, we need at least an 18 or higher. You will see in parentheses underneath a subscore of a 21 for English if you're interested in taking English Comp 1, which would be that general class in high school that we could fulfill there and also getting you out of Comp 1 in college, moving into Comp 2 if you've got the opportunity and you're doing that first semester, second semester type thing. Looking at our application, it is completely free. It's very easy to complete, but when you're going to ashland.edu slash apply, you wanna make sure that you're completing the College Credit Plus application, not the traditional freshman application. If you're interested in Ashland after you've completed high school, then that's when you'll complete the freshman application. And then you need to submit all approval forms from your high school. Many of you actually picked up the intend to participate form tonight. As long as you fill that out, get it in by April 1st, you're gonna be good to go. 
important dates to remember so you can see our application deadlines registration begins and when classes begin summer term fall semester and spring semester you guys can read these dates and if you have picked up one of these forms it has everything on it that you need to know if you did not pick one up again come visit Carla and I and you'll be able to pick those up so intent to participate it's the first one we've reiterated it multiple times tonight it's probably stuck in your brain you'll be able to do it applying ashland.edu slash apply for fall semester you want to get it into us by june 1st that way we can adequately prepare for you and make sure that we get you scheduled for classes that do begin at the end of august and then scheduling so after you have been accepted into the program, you want to come visit us in May or June for a group info session, and that's where we're going to show you how to begin scheduling for your classes. And then from there, we'll have you come to campus in August for an orientation. You've got two dates to choose from. We'll show you around campus. You'll get your Eagle card. You'll be able to get your parking pass, which will be free to you. And then essentially, it's going to be an AU student once that August rolls around. Savings, as I mentioned earlier, we are completely free. Um, any other fees that might come with the course will weigh for you as well, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Your school pays for your books. Um, now, although our parking pass is free, you guys are responsible for the gas, for the maintenance of your car, and things such as that. But we're going to help you out in any other area possible. Ah, that's it. It's easy. So. counselors in our area. I'm from Pioneer. I'm Crystal Escalera. But I just wanted to touch base and I, I can't stress enough for you guys to talk to your school counselors at your school districts because each school has special requirements. I know Pioneer doesn't um, require an intent letter but other schools do. Um, their books, how they're handled are different. Some will let you use the vouchers at the, at the bookstore at their college. Pioneer does not. We actually require your schedule and then you can go out and we get the books for you. You check them out from our library. So you want to make sure you're touching base with your school counselor so that we know what's going on. Um, in the North Central State College presentation you saw about the College Now program, the College Now Engineering and Business programs, you would have to apply through Pioneer also for those, pro those programs. So if that's something you're thinking about doing with an associate's degree, you want to make sure you're applying through Pioneer for those two programs. The other ones that they have would be through North Central State College. So there are special little requirements at each school district that you want to make sure you're looking into um, and that you're doing the process and the timelines that are required. Uh, let's see here, the textbooks, the vouchers, college now. Oh, testing. Okay, so AccuPlacer. So some school districts will offer the AccuPlacer test at their sites, at their school districts. Others do not. So again, touch base, with, touch base with your school counselor to double check to see if the AccuPlacer will be offered at your school district. Um, because some of that can be done at your school district where they don't have to go to the college to take that test. Um, so that's another you know, thing you want to make sure you're checking into and that you're aware of. Um, the timelines, I know we like to know at Pioneer of if you're taking the class so we can put on your schedule so we can transfer it and get that information back to our partner schools that we work with. So all that you want to make sure you're still talking to your school counselor about that, making sure you're meeting your graduation requirements. Um, anything else counselors you guys can think of? Check your emails, yes. Report your grades. I know I call down our students um, at the end of the nine weeks to double check on their grades so we can put it on their grade card. So again, communication's big, big time. You wanna make sure you're not jeopardizing anything for graduation. And I know I've, always, I've been surprised before in the past where a student was taking CCP and I didn't even know. So always just kind of make sure you're touching base with your counselor so that they can be aware and that you're not going over those 30 hours that are required by the state for free because then you'll get surprised with the bill. Um, and you know, and you can always double check and have your student log into their account at the college if you wanna see what kind of grade they're earning. That way you can know if you have to pay it back if they fail. So um, another thing that you, you might wanna think about too is like I know Pioneer, we offer um, five different math classes that are CCP. We offer a government, we have two English classes and some of our labs are CCP. Um, and some of the students don't realize that when they come in. So we try to work with them and try to make sure that they can get caught up to get the AccuPlacer in. So you're wanting to make sure you're finding out what's available for you because that tuition freedom scholarship from NC State, they can have the GPA, they can have the hours that they need, but sometimes, sadly, last year, a student forgot to apply. The one, you know, the one thing that we wouldn't think about that they would forget about, they did. So you always wanna make sure you're meeting all your steps for that you know, scholarship if that's what you're after. 